So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching this right now, first off, I must apologize because I know it's been a little while uh, to get this part of the video out or part of the case out because, as I explained in the, the last video, Twitch was being twitchy that day and absolutely destroyed my recording at the end and uh, even my local recording was somehow affected I, I or maybe i just had really crap luck so it's now been three months since we played this game and mm -hmm. uh, we kind of forgot some stuff but we're gonna try our best um please bear with us and we all we love you all so much anyway for being very patient so um yeah and of course i'm joined with the ever oh, scanning mini hi there she is so uh oh, sorry. <laughs> Super excited! So yeah, we're gonna try our best to get back in the groove of this. I mean, I once again, it's been months since we streamed this and played, so the genuine reactions might not be there, and that sucks. But you guys deserve to see the ending of this. So here we go. Oh, <clears throat> yes. Oh, wait, is my cursor? No, it's all good. I was so close <laughs> to the truth. Sorry. You're good. And I also apologize for the audio is all, all, over, all over the place. I tried my best to get back how it was. Eh. So. <laughs> there shouldn't have been anything wrong with the path I was on. But now, the way is closed off by a single contradiction. In other words. In other words. Yeah, I don't know who that was. Oh, I don't know who that is. Hey, it's oh. Japanese Maya. <laughs> oh, yeah, Susato. That was we can res. <laughs> If we can resolve that contradiction, the path will be cleared once more. All right, give me one second. I think I have it a little too loud, the game, anyway. Oh. I hope so. Okay, here, right, maybe we got it. Yes. Susato! Listen up, Narahodo. You've just been taken by surprise, and you've turned just a little bit ill. But if you're on the right path, then I believe there has to be an answer somewhere. Somewhere in the information recorded in the court record. Uh, it looks like our Japanese boy has finally run out of rebuttals. There's only one thing that your silence whispers to us. It says that you've accepted your own assertions as false. Igiari. You know what? Heck yeah. He feels like Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Those cheeks, though. Oh, my. Oh, crap. I'm missing all this. Something about wrong. It's just another challenge. To make my case even more well honed. So, yeah. We're, yeah. It's just because it's been so long since we played this, it feels good kind of going back into it a little bit. It does. I, I don't remember much now now that i think about it i there's been a lot going on in my life the past three months so it's like oh yeah the world's only slightly on fire so <laughs> <laughs> but we're trying our best here although hey yes. it is known that a parent okay so there's bad news and in... there no there's only bad news regarding ace attorney series right now um i forgot the mm. i forgot the name's name but uh yamazaki uh he was the director and writer for Ace Attorney Investigations 1, 2, Dual Destinies and Spirit of Justice. He unfortunately left Capcom after 15 years about like a, a few weeks ago. Um, mm. So everybody's freaking out. <laughs> um, yes. People are unsure where the series is at right now. Uh, Tokyo Game Show is still apparently happening in about two months. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be something virtual, whatever. Um, and it's always been known that the Tokyo Game Show is where the Ace Attorney series or the new games have been always been announced. So there's hope, maybe, that yes. we're still going to get something. But people are frightened because uh, Yamazaki is no longer there. Uh, Shu Takami, I think it's his name. I don't know if he's on come back and do this do a new ace attorney i don't know so let's hold out hope i guess you know fingers crossed please 
You're not wrong. There's no way that a falling knife could stab an upright person in the back. That is. In a normal situation. What? Oh, I think this is why I got pissed off about in this case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because... <laughs> Physics. Yeah, okay. oh my god. I, but I was like, no, that would that would kind of make sense. Technically. I mean, it, it just It's just convenience. I, I don't... Coincidence. I, I don't know if it's been shown yet in this case or not, or like in the video or whatever, but where we're going at and what you guys are about to see, I like to call it it's all it's feasible but it has to be like a perfect storm of consequences or consequences <laughs> uh, that's it's it's very cool it seems like it's very coincidental but it makes sense that could happen <laughs> everything has to be perfect it's yeah it's it sucks but that's what bothers me it's like can it really really never mind uh, i believe you well can we really do the the, the freaking like what Maya does? No. But it's in the game. I mean... <sighs> Alright. Uh, you, you're, you're right. <laughs> I kind of want to get into this right now. No, we're not. We <laughs> didn't finish this. <laughs> okay. Right. Oh, yeah. I was the judge. That's right. What are you talking about, defense? A certain piece of evidence tells a story. It tells us how my life got turned upside down. A falling knife could end up in the victim's back! Huh? Hey, what are you saying? What kind of nonsense trick is this? It seems that this is the last time I'll have to say this today. Defense, I order you pres to present your evidence. <sighs> this is the final contradiction. If I can clear this up, then one final undeniable truth will remain. Here's the evidence that proves how the falling knife fell into the victim's back. <clears throat> so. Oh, crap. <laughs> I forgot what it was. I, I believe I, I figured. I think I know what it is. So. Okay. The whole point, as it says right here, we need to figure out, well, how the hell did a falling knife get into her back? Because if it fell mm. from their window, it would hit the top of her head, right? Mm -hmm. So, basically, what's going to make her... What's going to make, have her back exposed? And... If she bent over. Now, why would she be bent over? Oh, yeah, because, um... That missing book, apparently. The fourth book. The, the Venture of the Lion's mm -hmm. Mate. Remember, this is one of the books that Mrs. Garadeb threw at her husband because a loving marriage. And, uh... <laughs> And it fell right in front of the victim's, um... I hate calling her victim. She's not dead, but, I mean, she is the victim of this case. But, still. Um, it fell in front of her in the sidewalk, and she got curious, as I think anybody would. You would bend down to pick it up. Her back's exposed. Yep. Yep. Present! Yes! I hope I... I think I pressed the right thing. Yes, I did. Yeah, okay, good. The fourth book discovered on the scene of the crime explains it all. This is it! This is the final piece of evidence that the defense will present. Hell yeah, this theme. This theme, yes. This burned book. Oh, this is, sorry, I was listening <laughs> to the theme song. <laughs> that book was from the Garadon home, correct? If you take a look at this photo of the crime scene, it tells you exactly where the book was present at the scene. The victim was holding Mr. Garadab's book in her hand. However, if you recall, the constable testified that he placed a book in her hand. That would be referring to when he moved the crime scene to the opposite footpath, yes? Oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Now about that, Patrolman O'Malley gave us a vital piece of testimony alongside that. Now, see, this flashback makes sense because it's been three months. We... <laughs> but why did you leave this book in the victim's hand? Uh, well, that's just how I found it. When we ran over to the crime scene, I forgot his voice, the victim was holding on to this book. So when I moved her, I just left her the same as I found her holding the book. 
In other words, the victim picked up that book by her own volition. So obviously, I got a whole time and I got to mute Discord so that doesn't get picked up. <laughs> I'm a professional. So obviously, oh, she picked it up before she was stabbed by the knife. <laughs> Th that does make sense. Oh, and you've got oh, he makes his hair pieces, right? <laughs> I forget how much I love this game. Um, when you've got a knife in your back, that's definitely not the time to be reading. So why, in the first place, did the victim pick up the book? Oh, I think I know. I think I can imagine a reason why. Huh? We know that this book fell from the land and was flat on the third floor to the ground. Furthermore, that was almost exactly the same time that the incident occurred. Exactly. They were at the same time. The victim was walking through the foggy London night on the pavement of Briar Road. As she walked on, suddenly a book fell right in front of her. The book that I threw? Mrs. Garadeb, put yourself in her shoes for a moment. Imagine you were walking along when suddenly a book fell before you. Well, I can't exactly imagine that happening, but... I suppose I'd probably reach out my hand. Oh, <laughs> I do feel bad. And I... <laughs> She's just so cute and dainty. I'm like, hi. She's like, oh, a book. <laughs> I'm a bear. And I'd pick... <laughs> and I'd pick the poor book up, of course. And that's our answer. She picked it up. A book fell from the sky in front of her, and of course, she reached out to pick it up. What do you think she might have looked like in this situation? Her back was pointed to the sky, completely defenseless, as she bent over. And in the next instant, while she picked it up... I still don't... Okay. I'm not about to get into you with this in this it's, video. It's the speed and having it lodged in. I understand the whole velocity thing. Just perfect storm. That's all I'm saying. The knife following the book descended directly into her back. But that's not all. Not far behind Viridian was another person walking on Briar Road. That would be the defendant, Sos uh, Soseki Natsumi. Oh! What Soseki witnessed at that moment was the victim suddenly collapsing to the ground. In that wispy fog, he failed to see the knife falling from the sky. Oh. In that case, the constable and his wife wouldn't have witnessed anyone else on the scene. And it's all because there was no criminal to flee the scene. This case is just a tragic accident. It's a result of a chain of coincidences of coincidences. That's the very truth of the stabbing Viridian Green. Does that sound right, Giverdebs? When you first revealed that knife, I started to realize. Maybe that's really what happened. Darling. Joan. I know. Whether it was on purpose or not doesn't really matter. What I've done is still a crime, right? I confess to it all. That night... As I was blinded by rage, I threw that book at my husband. And then I threw the knife, too. Dear. You don't have to say it. I know. Oh. Oh, the sun and the moon back together again. <laughs> That's right, that was the whole thing going on with them. Although, anytime I think of Sun and Moon in video games, I think of the enemies in Kirby. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hated them, too, growing That's up. <laughs> Those bastards. 
I'm so, so sorry. Sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. Oh, you got her. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. Ooh. Yep. Ooh. Ooh, my back. Oh, and his pants. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel bad, but... No, oh, but it's sweet. It is. I mean, I would say it's a loving couple, but she needs to not throw crap at him. <laughs> yeah, that, that's also a thing. She needs to talk out her frustrations like normal couples and ask some questions. You ain't got to be throwing stuff. I mean, People will say anything when they're under stress or duress. I mean, she threw a knife at him. Like, and she threw it to his face, if you remember, because, like, it had that chip in the pipe. Like, yeah. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> Let's guess that probably off camera. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Van Deeks, how was Mrs. Garadab doing? She was taken to a bed in emergency care. I'm told that the situation is hectic at the moment, but there shouldn't be any problems. Things will calm down soon. Unfortunately, they wrought this tragedy with their own hands. They will need them to resolve to stand and face it together. I'm not sure if one might call this a dark cloud silver lining, but... <clears throat> according to a report from the hospital, the victim was on the road to recovery. Oh, good. It seems to be just a matter of time before she regains her senses. We still don't know a thing about her, huh? Still... It's great that she survived this ordeal. Yeah, you're right. And as for you, defendant, so Seke Natsume. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir! I forgot his voice. Oh, whoops. On behalf of the Ministry of Justice, I wish to issue an apology to you. Yo, you journey to Great Britain from so far in order to study in peace. Yet we have only caused you immeasurable suffering. We are deeply sorry for this. I, I cannot accept. For the one who must apologize is me. Soseki. That night, a poor young lady had fallen before my eyes. But in my hysterical horror of what lay before me, I made a terrible mistake. What mistake? I thought that fine lady had died. Well, Patrolman Pat thought so as well. She did seem pretty dead, I guess. It has been a year since my arrival. I was still yet to... Uh, acclimatize, acclimatize to life in the imperial capital. Word. <laughs> I, I doubt I didn't say it right, but that's me. It's fine. My days were dismal. It was as if the spirits of the fog of London, damp and dreary, had come. So Saki does seem like a really sensitive guy. What a poignant image. And it was the same then. I thought she was bewitched by the very same malevolent spirits. I know that dropping my books and fleeing the scene was what I sh was wasn't what I should have done. I should have done nothing other than call a doctor and notify the police what have happened. Look, as an exchange student, I've dealt a terrible blow to the trust between our great empires. Thus, I must offer my deepest apologies. Sorry. Not a hodo. As far as I can see, the essence of this case seems to take an, uh, be an apparition of an interwoven chain of misfortunes. Manipulated by this apparition, we were ready to rush to a mistaken verdict. Lord Van Zeeks, and you, attorney who voyaged from Japan to the British Empire, you two are responsible for breaking that chain. This was absolutely a model trial. Thank you, my lord. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> You're good. Now, sage citizens of the jury, 
Yes, my lord. The court has decided that now is the time for this trial to end. We request your final verdict. Speaking as a foreman, I only wish to arrive at a dignified verdict. The truth is often cruel, isn't it? I don't... Oh. Did you do this one? Or? I think I did this, okay. yeah. I didn't think this would end this with us losing a juror. Well, I stand here now as my wife's messenger. It's about time! Now I can finally get back to work, right? Oh yeah, this guy. Oh, no, my favorite one. It should be a nice story for my grandchildren. <laughs> now, jurors, the time has come. Present your final verdicts to the court. He's a. Oh yeah, the glitchiness. Oh yeah, the fire. That's okay, it happens. Yay. I will now deliver the verdict to the defendant, Soseki Natsume. <gasps> Not guilty. Woohoo! Confetti in the courtroom. Thank you. I was like, you better say it. And also lag in the courtroom. Oh, ah, oh yeah. Ah, There's also fun. Ah. Who's setting one off in this closed room? <laughs> One more thing, defendant. Yes, my lord. You're now a free man once again. I hope you will endeavor to bridge the gap between our two cultures. And be sure that you never find yourself in this courtroom again. Yes. Yes, of course. I, Sasaki Natsumi, do solemnly swear. I am so moved. <laughs> oh, yeah. With this, today's trial comes to a close. <coughs> Bye. Yay! We did it. Dead. Oh, it's my birthday. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. Yay! <laughs> you got a not guilty verdict. Yeah. Oh, substitute. Huh? Oh, you mean me? Of course I do! Are there any other substitutes here? I wouldn't really know. We've come a long way from substitute law student Narahodo, haven't we? I would have preferred if we arrived at just Narahodo instead. Oh, my name is finally absolved of all doubts! Heart full of glee! <laughs> Laugh loud and free! He seems really happy. I can tell since he said laugh. It would be a lot easier to tell if he actually laughed, though. Oh, Substitute, you've really done it. You... <laughs> you salvaged my life from the rubble. It wasn't me. You're free because you didn't hurt anyone. It's great that everyone else has come to see that, too. <laughs> no, you see? You've got the wrong idea. Dear Substitute! Y yes I said this before, but I never could have come to love London. On the roads I look around and see only foreigners. In the sky, only brick skyscrapers. The Brits look down at me from above. They point and laugh. Look at that dwarf! I think you're just imagining that. However, Today, you have pulled me out of my tiny hole of depression. You stood on the grand stage against those Brits, and you didn't dare retreat. In equal battle, you fought with your words to unveil the truth unknown. When I saw those great fireworks launch in the ground courts, my heart cried for joy. And because some of the crap got out of my eyes, mankind is great! We're both grateful to hear you say that. My old friends in Japan will be delighted to hear about this mis misadventure when I go home. Huh? Go home? Dad, I don't know who this is. <coughs> oh, please, I don't want to be who I think it is. Oh, oh I think it is. Oh, hey, I've been looking for you three. Ah, oh, damn it, there he is. Ah, uh, yay! I love homes, but dear God, does he do some stupid crap? <laughs> oh. <laughs>
Ah, sorry to keep you waiting. I happen to oversleep just a bit. My, if it isn't Mr. Holmes. Whoa, that was close. It looks like I made it just in time. Um. It looks like court's about to be, be in session. I know you got this, Master Naohodo. Actually, the trial just ended. What? How? I was in such a rush for nothing then. Arg! It's you, you damned monster! The Sherlock Holmes! Hmm? I'm sorry, have we met? This is Soseki. You do remember arresting him, right? Oh, that's right. I didn't recognize him. He's always hiding out in his little basement of a flat or in those dank little jail cells. What's he doing in a brightly lit room like this? <laughs> I know who he was. You know, you could be a little less rude. Curse you, the Sherlock Holmes. It's all your fault that this happened to me. I've got... Yeah, I've got a whole mountain of things I need to say to you. No, 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 wait, wait. Sorry, I've got it now. You must be... Ah, the man that ran off from that crime scene. You abandoned that poor victim. Huh? If you take her to a hospital instead... By now, she probably would have been awake again. Mm -hmm. Oh, but oh well. I think it was inevitable for her to end up this way anyway. Well, the same, you know. Something like that is just too much of a fright. I'm honestly very sorry for what I did. Good. Uh, by the way, you said there was a mountain of things you needed to say? <laughs> God. <laughs> no, I suppose not. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're just too funny for me to handle. Poor Soseki. <laughs> Come on, look at the bright side. What a pleasant experience, right? And all for free! And from what I can see, you've been declared not guilty. <coughs> I'm still not safe. Whatever do you mean? I knew it all along. I'm cursed. Cursed by these damnable spirits and cursed by the Grim Reaper himself! Oh. Uh, Prosecutor Bar uh, Barak von Zeeks. I'll never forget what I heard. When that prosecutor's in court, even if you're not guilty, you're doomed to a terrible demise. N no, Soseki, you'll be fine. Huh? Even if some sort of unruly bringer of death appears before us, I, Tsusato, will not fail to keep you safe from harm. Oh! Oh, yeah, that's right. Tsusato task. He'll get a taste of my special move, the Susato Toss! You could at least warn me before you do that, Susato? <laughs> so, Soseki, what are you going to do now? You mentioned going home a while ago. Before long, I plan to go home to the Japanese Empire. Huh? It's been a whole year since I first arrived in the British Empire. I'm going to university, living on my professor's teachings, visiting the libraries and bookshops. I've come to know this wonderful world of literature, along with the city I was born from. But I realize that my mission is to teach our empire about this culture. So, Seki. So, put simply... You've gotten cold feet at the thought of the uh, Grim Reaper's curse. Is that right? No! You see, you got the wrong idea. The more I learn about literature, the more these strange emotions swell up within me. When I return home, I wish to write something with my own two hands. Really? Yeah, I'd love to read one of Sasaki's novels someday. And also, I guess, interesting fact, uh, I know a lot of viewers when we originally played this 
were saying, Soseki is a real a character. Yeah, he's a real novel or real novelist or Arthur. Arthur. Author. <laughs> <laughs> Words are hard for me, as you can tell, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yes. But yeah, no, apparently Soseki was a real author. Um, I don't know what he's really known for, but uh, stuff I look I guess it's something I'll have to look up later. <clears throat> now, Master Nahodo and Mr. Sato, what are your plans? Our plans? Are you going back to Japan with that mustachio gentleman? Why would we do that? We haven't even been in London for a week now. No, our trip has only just begun. Hmm. I well, suppose you've been you know, you've been staying in a hotel then. Yeah, we're trying to find a cheap place to live before we go bankrupt. According to our calculations, our allowance will fit entirely in about ten days. Didn't somebody from Magic School Bus always say that? Like, according to my calculations. Oh yeah, was it the oh? I can't remember. I can't remember. Didn't they have a new show on Netflix? That... I mean, I think so. I don't. I have to look it up. Yeah. Ah, oh, whatever. Oh. If you like, you're free to take my flat. Um, your room doesn't have any windows, right? Well, well, yes, that's true. But the floor, walls, and ceiling are all in perfect order. Ugh. And there's more. You'll never be alone because spirits will be there to curse you. Spirits? Indeed. When you sound asleep at night, a spirit suddenly rings your neck. What a refreshing way to start the day! Hmm. You know, I'll need some time to think about it first. I've got a proposal for you two. How would you like to stay at my home for a while? Really? You see, our home has a bit of a vacancy. Even if you'd just be taken to the attic. Can you really call that a vacancy? We talked it over with the landlord this morning, and now Iris is cleaning it up. You should come as soon as you can. I doubt you have any luggage, right? Oh my! What a lovely proposal! Oh, we need to live and that is the problem in this home! So many emotions are welling up inside me. We graciously accept. I don't suppose I even have the option to look elsewhere now? Alright, it's decided then. Tonight, Iris will be flexing her cooking muscles for a big welcome dinner. Mr. Suzeki, you're free to come come over as well. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate the offer. Well then, I'll be working on the paperwork for Soseki's acquittal. Sato looks so excited. Oh. <laughs> Don't you? Substitute, I knew I was right to choose you. I'm so, so glad I can meet someone like you in this foggy city. I feel the same way, Soseki. It's just sad that we already have to say goodbye. I realize I belong in Japan. Substitute, one day I swear we will meet again. Of course. I hope I can call myself a full-fledged attorney by then. Well, perhaps by then I'll have the air of a comp competent author. All right, you two. Our coach has arrived. We should get going soon, Master Narahodo. Okay, Mr. Holmes. Hopefully, Mr. Saseki will be acquitted in time to make it for dinner. And so, the curtain closed on Saseki's trial. The three of us boarded a coach and set off for Baker Street. Just this little portion left, and that's that. Oh, yeah. It's our new home. <laughs> uh, I just realized something I do in the next video because of... Yeah, never mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
We'll let, the, we'll let the viewers who are watching the VODs uh, find out that in, in a second. Oh, gosh. So this is it. It's our new office. Our new office, huh? I like that. It's got a nice ring to it. It does. This is like a dream come true. Do you see this, Asogi? It's only a small one, but I feel like I've come one step closer to fulfilling your dream. What do you think, you two? Do you love it, or do you love it? Well, Mr. Holmes, thank you so much for this. It's such a charming little room. I'm positively overwhelmed with glee. That's great. Iris and I are glad you're here, too. <laughs> Come on, everyone. It's almost time for supper. When Uncle Soseki gets here, we're having a big party. Tanji, is that you? Oh my god. I can move this walk. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know, go watch Bug Fables over on Skinny's channel. It's fun. Please. It's a lot of fun. Oh, I did that already. Oh. Uh, Miss Iris. I would just love to help you prepare. Okay, then Susie, you can make the salad. All right. So, how does it feel, Master Naohodo? You've established your very own office in London. Man, I, I can't stop trembling from the excitement. Along with the thought of what might be waiting for us in the city. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt when I opened my office here. Then I figured I was diarrhea. That is, until I came to know of the darkness lurk lurking in this foggy city. Huh? London is praised for being the brightest, most prosperous imperial capital of all. However, as the flame of London burns brighter and brighter, the shadow cast by its light grows into an ever greater darkness. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I'm sure you'll find out for yourself in due time just how deep the darkness goes. Now, I believe this bears repeating. Welcome to London, Master Nahoda. At that point, there is no way I could have truly understood Mr. Holmes's words. No, it would be just a short while longer before I would peer into the abyss of my own eyes. What is that abyss you guys might be wondering? <laughs> well, you have to find out in the next video because uh, that's that for episode four. The Adventure Yo. of the Clouded Kokoro. So, um... Yeah. Hey, you know, that was really fun, going back into this and just playing. Um, it was. Oh, my headphones are gonna die. Uh oh <laughs> Or my AirPod. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing we've just finished this right now. So, um... Yeah, guys. Uh, once again, I just need to get this done for you guys so you guys can figure out how, how the ending of this case went. I do apologize once again that I guess had to wait a little while for while for this, and then also that you didn't get like our true, true, genuine reactions. But um, this is still fun. I mean, and that's why I really, really enjoyed about this particular game. The overall story was just it left you wanting more. Well, not, not that sounds bad. Wanting more. I mean, it's good because it's like it got you intrigued. And you want to find out more and more and more to keep going along. So, this game, I'd like to say, definitely ha has a special place for us now in our hearts. Um, so, that is that. And, well, next time we begin the fifth and final episode of this game. Which I forgot what that was titled. But, uh, you'll be in for a treat oh yes 
Definitely. <sighs> so, as usual. Oh, and also thank you, Danny, for uh, re- re-recording this with me. I definitely do appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. <clears throat> so, as usual, thank you all so much for watching. And we'll see you all let, uh, next time for Let's Play slash stream The Great Ace Attorney. Bye. Have a great day, everybody.